This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. Thank you, Professor Dr. Marburger, for taking time to talk to us here in Stockholm about some of your impressions and thoughts about what's happening in the area of prostate cancer and also advanced prostate cancer. Well, we're seeing an exciting development, or we have been seeing it in the last five years. Our clinical problem in advanced prostate cancer is the failure of antigen deprivation, which is the first-line treatment. And uh, up till about five years ago, that basically meant that we were running out of options. There were some variations of the treatment, but basically it was only about five years ago that we really had new approaches. First was chemotherapy, cytotoxic therapy, which has been shown to promote or to extend survival and hasn't been as successful in palliation, which is an important issue in a patient who's had the disease for 10, 15 years and has gone through all phases of it. But now we're beginning to see a number of drugs which are basically a modification, some of them at least, of hormonal therapy, which seem to be able to influence the antigen receptor, which is still the turning point in keeping the tumor going. What about an earlier stage prostate cancer at this point? Well, early stage prostate cancer is the big issue for urologists because I would say 80% of the patients we see come in, let's call it the localized cancer stage. And uh, we ha our big issue there is are we treating cancer that needs to be treated and are we treating it sufficiently depending on its aggressiveness. And these are some of our mo main interests right now. We feel that we have become much better in selecting cancers that need treatment. Active surveillance for tumors with a low tendency to progress is an accepted treatment. It's not no treatment. Right. It is active surveillance. About 30% of these patients will ultimately have localized treatment. But um, one out of seven patients ultimately fails curative treatment and goes to into a phase where he needs some other form of treatment. And up until this point, you really have been limited because you've had chemotherapy, which now has, for the advanced cancer patient, at least there are new options that we can offer these men. Well, there are some other issues in there, too. I mean. Prostate cancer is a cancer of the aging man. And even patients that have progressive disease, only about half of them die from their prostate cancer. The others die of something else because they're over 85. So not every patient that has progressive prostate cancer really dies of his disease, and therefore the treatment we apply has to be adapted to the individual situation. And, but now, as you said, we have real, uh, real alternatives, and the way it looks, they are less invasive and, and less toxic alternatives than what we had before. What are the associated side effects associated with these new, new drugs? Well, it depends on what drug you're looking at. If we take those which are, let's call them, most imminent or have already been approved, it's mainly drugs that still impact the hormonal control of the cancer. And uh, the side effects are there, but they are not very significant compared to, for example, um, the alternative cytotoxic therapy, first line, second line, third line cytotoxic therapy. What is also important for a very old man is that it can be done by oral treatment. It can be done on an outpatient basis. He does not have to modify his lifestyle which many of them do, and the problems, and I've been treating patients with chemotherapy now for 15 years. The toxicity in old men, men that are usually older than what we see in our standard studies, which the th treatment is based on, is considerably higher. Professor Marburger, what is in the pipeline? Where do you see the future of prostate cancer in current research? Well, right now it definitely is in what we've learned over the last couple of years is that the androgen receptor is not cut out by androgen deprivation or castration. 
we know that there are a number of ways this androgen receptor adapts and still promotes the androgen-driven driven mechanism in prostate cancer. And we have developed new approaches in interfering with this mechanism. And so we have a newer form, a second-line hormonal therapy, which is coming up now, which seems to be very attractive. One of the problems we're facing right now in clinical practice is that the ones we're talking about have only been approved after failure of chemotherapy, which is a logical um, problem because in order to be approved, they have to show survival advantages and patients that have not reached the castrate-resistant phase or the, let's call it, end phase, just have a very long life expectancy. And to prove that there is an extension of survival takes a longer period of time. So the trials are not there yet for that group of patients, which is a big group, but already for castrate-resistant prostate cancer that failed chemotherapy, they have been shown to both improve survival and, and this is probably even more important, give palliation. Do you anticipate that at some point some of these new therapies that you're using in the advanced setting will move towards the earlier disease setting? Oh yes, definitely so, but it has to be proven by the appropriate trials. The trials are all underway, but it'll take a longer period of time. And the last question I have, I find it interesting because it varies so much by country in Europe. You come from Austria. What is these, uh, the usage of PSA versus uh, digital rectal exam? Where are we as far as screening in your country? Well, digital rectal exam has really lost a lot of its uh, significance, I would say. The earlier we move in the detection of prostate cancer, whereas PSA is the standard. Like I said, in Austria, well over 60% of all men over 50 have had at least one PSA test in their life. And I think this is where it's going to go all over Europe. In fact, I think Europe is a lot more homogeneous now than it was five years ago. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking time to speak with us. Thank you.